I'm Cindy Kelly, Atomic Heritage Foundation. It's February 22nd, 2017, and I have Lionel Ames with me. And my first question to him is, tell us your full name and spell it, please. Lionel Ames, L-I-O-N-E-L, -E Ames, A-M-E-S. Terrific. So first question is to tell us something about yourself, when you were born and where and... Okay, I was born March 6, 1923, in Chicago, Illinois. And then I, you know, went to grammar school, went to high school, and I went to two years of engineering college, and then I was drafted. And I was in the Army approximately 10 months when my brother, Dr. Maurice Shapiro, and I'll sh shortly tell you why my name is different, because I was originally Lionel Shapiro. When I was, uh, I was drafted in the Army approximately 10 months, and my brother went to Los Alamos, New Mexico, and he saw soldiers working side by side with civilians. So he got me on Los Alamos, New Mexico. So I went there, and uh, it was a wonderful place. I worked in a, uh, in a chemistry lab. I worked on the implosion part of the bomb. And uh, I loved it. I uh, was there approximately two and a half years, approximately two, two and a half years. And, and being an entertainer and a freelance cantor, I, I conducted Friday night services there every Friday, and uh, I did it on my own, and I conducted a Passover Seder there at Los Alamos. And uh, when uh, my time was up, uh, Dr. Oppenheimer sent me a letter asking me to stay on, which absolutely I was f flabbergasted. When I got out, I, went, uh, I didn't accept it because I wanted to finish college. So I uh, went back to Chicago and I finished my engineering degree in industrial engineering. And the next day, I went into show business. I was deep down inside me, went into show business. And I changed my name to Lionel Ames from Lionel Shapiro. And uh, that's... Uh, Well, that's what I did, and I came. Uh, I went to. Uh, I went when I came. I went to. I was in Chicago about two years, and I went to New York for five or six years. I was in three Broadway shows. I did a lot of entertaining there. Uh, three Broadway shows as an actor and a singer, and uh, and then I, about five or six years later, I came with a show here, a ten-week show including Carol Burnett, who was there at the time, which she was not well known many years ago. And then I came to California and uh, I went into show business. That's my story. Well, that's, that's a great story. I'm going to go back to Los Alamos. Yes. And I'm very interested in your work as a freelance cantor and what what you can tell us about what the Jewish community was like among the scientists there on the hill? Well, there, I mean, there were there were plenty of Jewish people there, and because they had a lot, a lot of people came to my Friday night services, and they came to my Passover seder. Uh, so, uh, and I worked at the chemistry lab. I worked and sometimes. I went to work at night. Uh, I, I didn't get paid overtime, but I loved what I was doing. As a matter of fact, I, I, I don't want to brag about it, but uh, I, I figured something out. The, the implosion part of the bomb, the liquid that we had to freeze, they froze with a lot of cracks in there. So I came up with an idea of how to eliminate the cracks. So they gave me six people to, to work, uh, help me, which I was flattered. And, uh, and, uh, and then uh, so we worked on it. Now, I don't know what the results of, were, of what happened after that. But the, the, I guess maybe that's one of the reasons Dr. Oppenheimer sent me a letter to stay on. I, I'm not sure. Well, it must have worked. Yeah, so, or I something. Must have solved the problem. I hope so. Yeah, that's great. Wow. 
Um, but you changed your name primarily. Of course, I went into show business from Lionel Shapiro to Lionel Ames. Yes. Because of the prejudices in Hollywood? It's a so-called professional name for better for a better reason. For, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, you can say that, yeah. So I know your brother, your older brother. Well, yes, you told me you, you, uh, you knew him well. I did. He's a marvelous man. He was a great guy, a he great really brother. Was. So um, he was your older brother? He, yeah, he's my only brother. I had, I had four sisters, and then he was my... My brother. Uh -huh. So he kind of shepherded you to Los Alamos. Yeah, he got me into Los Alamos. So uh, you said that, uh, he said that there were army people here, so why don't you come? Were you in the army? Not why don't I come. He got me in. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to say no. Oh, so you had a direct invitation to work there. That's very yeah. unusual. Well, you know, it's a good thing. I could have been sitting my the army base that I was on was sent overseas, I could have, you know, who knows what would have happened. So he saved my life in one, you know, more than one way. Yeah. Wow. So what do you remember about um, living in Los Alamos? Where, where did you live? Well, I lived in a barrack. And I was two blocks away from where my brother lived. And uh, we used to play, uh, play tennis together. And, and uh, my nephew was born there. And, and that's how I got to see you, because my nephew donated $150 to the foundation in my honor, which I was very flattered. And uh, then you called me, and here I am. And I'm very touched and moved by it. That's great. So, my next question, let's see. Um, what was... Um, did you work uh, extremely hard? Or you say you worked some nights? Just I worked the nights on my own. I didn't have to. Nobody told me I had it, but I loved it. I didn't get overtime. I was in the Army. But I loved it, so I loved what I was doing there. It was a wonderful experience for me in many ways. Do you remember some of the people who inspired you or people that you worked with or your colleagues at Los Alamos other than your brother? Any, any names that... Not really. And my boss there, uh, I don't remember his name, but uh, he was my boss there on, on, the, on the project. Mm -hmm. And was it, did it feel like a, a small community to you? I oh, mean, sure. Oh, sure. And it was a very, uh, you know, very private. And not many people knew uh, what the place was all about for obvious reasons. So did you get uh, out at all? Did you get down to Santa Fe? I, I, there, I, yeah, I went there once in a while, yeah, sure. Do you remember going to La Fonda, the hotel on the plaza? No, a, no, yeah. no. It's just the same. They've just restored it to look like it was then. Yeah. Anyway, um, and do you, do you happen to go through the 109 East Palace, the office where Dorothy McKibben held forth? Maybe you didn't need to do that. No. No, I just ring a bell. So you had a very special experience. Yeah, it, I'm a very, very lucky man. Very lucky. God was on my side. So you were technically still part of the army though, right? Yeah, oh sure. Yeah, were you, can, did they consider you, um, uh, you weren't part of the special engineer detachment? No, no. No. Yeah. And the, the, I think some of the people who I worked with, you know, were, were civilians. I'm sure. It was mainly civilians. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. sure. But oh, in the yeah. barracks, you were with other... In the barracks, I was with all soldiers, yeah. Right, right. And did you have to wear your uniform? I wore my... Work, oh, yeah, I wore my uniform. Mm -hmm. I was a staff sergeant then. Uh -huh. All right. And uh, how did you get around? Did you um, have access to a jeep? Did you... 
bicycle? That's a good question. I don't remember how uh, how we got to Santa Fe when I visited there. I don't remember. You know, it wasn't last week. <laughs> <laughs> right, no, exactly. I'm <laughs> probing deep memories. So yeah. how old were you when you... I was about 22, 23. Uh -huh. Wow. And now in, in two weeks, I'm going to be 94. Oh, my. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I'm very, very, very lucky. I, I have young genes. That's why I don't look my age. And I'm also a holistic person, so I, I try to take care of my, myself. So are you still performing? Well, not anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of, um, I don't know, did you, did you ever get involved in entertainment at Los Alamos? Well, uh, and, oh, I was in a play there, too. I forgot. I didn't have a big part, but I was in a play. I forgot the name of the play. But the end, as far as entertaining is concerned, it's the cantorial thing that I did, Friday nights and Passover. So how did you learn to be a cantor? Oh, my father was an Orthodox rabbi, and then I grew up in that surrounding. Oh, so can you I, tell I, me more about him? Well, uh, he was a wonderful father, and uh, where was he born? He was born in Europe, but he, in an early age, he went to what was then called Palestine, mm -hmm. then eventually became Israel. So uh, that's how I got my training and. Uh, became a, a cantor because I was able to sing. So I became a cantor and also uh, an entertainer, an English entertainer, and I, and I mixed everything together hmm. and separately. Yeah. That's good. Well, there are a lot of creative people at Los Alamos. Who oh, are sure. Also musically inclined and theatrically inclined. Did you ever go to any plays in the, the little theater, as they called it? Where the playhouse at, at Los Alamos? Well, I, I participated in yes, one play, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember if I went to an, another, I don't know how many times they had, they had plays there, I don't remember. It wasn't yesterday at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, right. So, let's see, so you had four sisters. Where, where do they fall in the sibling order? Were they younger than you? Well, um, I was second to the youngest. The, the, the three sisters were older than me, and then the, my, and they were born in Israel. My, and my younger sister and myself were born in Chicago. Wow. Were they involved in the war? Did they get caught no, up in World no, War II? No, no, no. no. And of course, there was my brother that, you know, he was, he was involved in Los Alamos, right. of course. Exactly, exactly. I can see him now. He, we had a, a conference there. He spoke at in the Los Alamos, in the big gymnasium, they, or auditorium they have at the high school. Hmm. So, um, that was a while ago, too, 2001 or two. Uh -huh. yeah. well, let me ask you some more about, about your services. Uh, for, do you remember where they were held? Which, which services? The, the, the one you were cantoring? Oh, well, I, I, there was a hall there at, the, at Los Alamos. I don't remember. It was a hall. That, that, that I used that. that we had whatever, whatever amount of people we had there. And the same hall when we had the Passover Seder. I conducted uh, mm -hmm. the same hall. We had you mm -hmm. know, a couple hundred people there. So what did your father think of that? Was he proud of you? Uh, I'm, I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. Oh, that's great. I think I'm... Um, so after this, you, you, after Los Alamos, uh, you get your degree... And then I went straight into show business. Huh. Yeah, from first primarily as an actor and an entertainer, and then I gave up the acting because it was a precarious profession, and I stayed into entertaining. So I was an entertainer, uh, and uh, I uh, provided, and I was a, uh, uh, I provided entertainers for, for, I was a corporate entertainer, and I provided um, 
music and entertainment other than my, myself. I was an event planner, that's the word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So I was a busy, I was busy seven nights a week. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I had a, um, <laughs> had a wonderful wife and have three great children and you may know one of them. You know the, the television show Everybody Loves Raymond? Mm -hmm. Brad Garrett is my son. Oh, wow. Yes. That's good. Great. You're Raymond's brother in the show. Uh-huh. Wow. Yes. Like father, like son. Yes. Yeah, that's neat. Very neat.